So we went off down to Bundanon and had a really fantastic visual arts camp for exclusively just you guys, year 11. And uh, I'm sure you'll all agree that we had a really, really fantastic time. 60 of us almost went. So we had to go in two groups and we produce some absolutely fantastically beautiful work. You all really rose to the challenge that was set for you by the educators down there to produce work that was, you know, not the sort of work you're used to producing. Thinking about using different materials, layering your work, uh, not necessarily trying to draw two, uh, three dimensional landscape, but try and reference the landscape in an ab more abstract way and in a more organic way, and sort of push things around on your page. Um, and you and you and you and you produce some really bold work. I mean, these charcoal drawings were just absolutely stunning and big. We watched the video on uh, Peter Sharp. Uh, a contemporary Australian artist and you know he invited in the video he invites us into the studio to have a look at his practice and we learnt that he like like you are asked to do down there he, he doesn't paint the landscape as he sees it in a photographic way or a representational way he does it in a more abstract way and he's standing there in front of all those little sculptures that he makes from all the components that he finds out in in, in his little journeys around the landscape and then those sculptures uh, he draws images of them and the shadows they cast, that becomes the composition for his paintings, which is kind of kind of the path we're going down. We're pretty much inspired by, by this artist at the moment. And if you go out into the landscape, you can pretty much almost see all these, uh, I guess, images of these, where these sculptures could come from. I mean, look at these two trees here. They look a bit like the sculptures that you guys went down and made out of sticks. So we, we sent you out after watching the Peter Sharp uh, studio video we sent you out and you all came back with some rocks and some sticks and you made these great little sculptures in the same way as Peter Sharp does in his practice and then we brought them back to school and we refined them and got rid of the masking tape and used wire and string and hot glue guns instead uh, and then hopefully you're at this stage now hopefully you've um, drawn some images of your sculptures into your process diary and then following the tutorial that I've put together in the last video, uh, enlarged your uh, drawings onto your canvases. On the left is if you're working with two small canvases and on the right is if you're working with one large canvas. And everyone should be at this stage now if you're watching this video. If you if you don't know about this, go back and watch the, the first video uh, that in, the, in your Google Classroom that tells you how to enlarge your um, how to how to enlarge your drawings up onto the canvas. All right, this is Peter Sharp's work, which we know about now. We we understand it now. We know that uh, it does reference landscape. We know that these are actually paintings inspired by drawings of real objects, and the objects are the little sculptures that he makes. So uh, this is how he arrives at these quite abstracted looking images. I'm going to introduce you to this artist, John Olson. We're going to be looking at John Olson a bit. He paints more organic, oceanic. Um, loose, more linear kind of work. What I mean by linear, there's lots of line in it. It's quite a simple word, self-explanatory. Um, and he works in sort of more warm and cool. Uh, you can see this here. Obviously, there's two separate paintings, and one's a lot warmer and one's a lot cooler in its palette. And and you could sort of look at his work as maps. It's almost like an aerial view of the of the landscape, particularly the one on the left. If you look up, you can see like little little blue shoreline up the top, as if there's like a harbour or something there. Uh, this is Wendy Stavriano. She references landscape quite clearly in her work. And she, much like John Olson, flips us between standing and looking across a landscape and then all of a sudden we're looking at a map, like an aerial view. Particularly one on the right is quite map-like indeed. So she, and, and, you know, she gives us little hints. She, you, know, you can see on the one on the left, obviously there's a moon in it. Um, obviously there's a bit of a mountain sort of looking shape in it, but it doesn't, she almost takes us to saying this is a mountain and then she doesn't quite give us a mountain. Then she flattens it again as you move your way down the canvas and, and sort of becomes abstract again. This is Luke Scabaris, similar, in a similar fashion to, uh, I guess, a bit more like Peter Sharp or maybe John Olson. He's quite organic and curvy in his and like he's got quite curvy lines curvy linear is the word we'd use um, which just means 
why I'm saying curvy lines, really. But uh, and he's and he's quite thick and textured. And again, he has this battle between warm and cool. You see, you move across his work. There's this kind of rhythmic push and pull between you know you're in a warm zone of reds and oranges and all of a sudden you hit some cool blues and greens and turquoise and then you're back into some hot yellows and then you're back into some really dark and cool blues again and and take note in the one of the painting on the right if you look up in the top right hand corner there's really nice little subtle bits of quite bright iridescent purple so uh on the, on the, the painting on the left I, I guess you could argue that you can see a tree like shape in there it's not exactly a tree but the painting on the right, it, it's, is it a map? Is that, is that blue shape on the right a river running through a landscape? Are we looking down on it or are we looking across it? It gives us a little hint in the top left-hand corner of that with the pale blue. It, you know, it, it, he, he bounces us around between realism and representation and total abstraction. But the whole time, all these artists references, they reference the landscape in their color, their texture, their shapes and their symbolism. So, um, Let's 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 get stuck into this. Uh, so here we are again in the in the little uh, garage studio of Mr. Middleton. Um, I, I've got a bit of a Hawaiian shirt theme going on tonight. I just sort of felt inspired by that. Um, anyway, hopefully uh, you've finished drawing up your charcoal uh, renditions of your drawings onto your canvas. So if you remember, uh, we started with the. Um, the sculpture, which is just here, this, these things, and then you did some charcoal drawings. I'll move those out of the way. And uh, those charcoal drawings, you didn't use these window frames and viewfinders, people call them, and you've enlarged them successfully on either onto a large canvas or uh, two smaller ones. Doesn't matter. Either way, it's the same, it's the same work, and so same same amount of work if you use a large or a small. Canvas. So, um, what do we do now? How do how do we how do we how do we uh, paint in an abstract way? It's a difficult thing. It's very hard to let go of all your all, all your not misconceptions, but all, all your ideas about about painting and landscape and uh, where the horizon is. And uh, do you need a horizon? Do you need a reference sky? Um, and do you need to reference land and do you need to reference like objects in your work or could you uh, just kind of work quite flat in, in, the, in the way that Peter Sharp and uh, Luke Scabaris and Wendy Stavrianos and John Olson work. So we're, we're going to explore that now. So let's let's get stuck straight into it. We're going to start by just, uh, we're going to do it in stages. And so we're going to start by working with just uh, water and white paint. to begin. Uh, grab some water. Need, need a decent amount of water. Um, I'm sort of holding a, as you're probably guessing, I'm, I'm holding a bit of a selfie stick here. Um, got a collection of brushes, probably don't need that many, there's probably a, bit, a few too many. Um, and I got a stonking great blob of white paint. Now, what we want to do now is we want to get some paint into this. So, I'm just going to move everything out of the way. This is where my water and my white paint comes into play. I get myself a nice thick brush. Okay, and I'm gonna. What you'll notice is that is that water and charcoal do stuff. Actually, I'm, I'm, it's a bit hard. I'm drifting off the camera. But if you just if you get some water, and if you just pick up the edge of the charcoal, don't kind of go like this and go right through the middle. Just pick up the edge of it. And let these runs happen. And just work either side of the charcoal. Don't obliterate your drawing. But start now drawing with the brush and filling areas in. And using the edge of the brush. Now keep changing direction. Don't go all the one direction. Don't go like, like that. Scrub and then turn direction. See how I'm changing direction? And, and, and leave some white. Really important that you leave some white. Let's let's get back from it. Starting to get some tone into it. Okay, so work your way around your around your canvas. Don't do the whole thing. Just put some water in sections. Right. So this section here. Ooh, careful. Don't panic if you if I've got a little trick we're going to do where we go over it. Let it run. Let it run. Okay, and. Don't always hold your brush like this. 
holds your brush like that, okay? And here we go, another little section there. So just like we did with our drawing at Bundanon, on, um, we, we kind of just let out sections of it. So don't do it everywhere. Well, there's, there's some there. Just be a little bit, I guess, strategic about it. And I'm not looking at drawing anymore. Now, I really like this squiggly bit here, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of water into it. So do it randomly across the canvas, but do it evenly. So, uh, what would I mean by that? What I mean by that is, see how I've left sections white? So do it randomly, like do it here, then leave that line fresh. Do it there, leave that line fresh, then do it underneath but do it evenly across the canvas, okay? So don't do it super neat, but make sure that, you know, by, by the time you're done, there's a rhythmic kind of, you know, dry bit, water bit, dry bit, water bit, dry bit, water bit, a bit like a checker, a bit like a chessboard, I guess. And you know, color in sections with your tone, like we did at the top, I've got a colored in section here, so I've got to kind of balance it. Um, so if I step back from this, and I'll just try and point with my brush, I've got, I've worked with diagonals, so I've got this bit here, and then I got that bit there, and then I got that bit there, and then I bounce across to there, and then I bounce across to there, and then I bounce across to there, and I kind of do this ching, ching, this sort of weaving, dropping, um, you know, falling leaf diagonal where it just, you know, how a leaf, when it falls down through the air, it, it floats. And so we just float our way down. I'm really happy with that. That's about it. This is one of those things where don't overdo it. Okay? Now remember, I'm not thinking about where's the sky, where's the land, where's, you know, the waterfall. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking about blurring out some of the lines and creating some space and creating some density. What I mean by that is, here's a bit of density, here's a bit of space. Here's, you know, and break the, but then break the tension of the space with a, with a little thin wriggly line. So I've got density, space, density, space, density, density, space, space, bigger space. Okay, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick up some white paint, dip my brush in a bit of water, Pick up the white paint again, brush, water, and I'm going to hold the brush like this, and I'm going to work in some paint, some white paint. And we work quite thickly, so I get paint like this, and I might just go like this. If I move in on it, it's quite lumpy, okay? If I was to go sideways on it. Yeah, there's a fair bit of texture there. Can you see that? Um, you could use your impasto medium this way as well. We're gonna add impasto medium later on, but just just get some just get some lumpy white paint in there and use this use this metal part of the brush. Okay, see I'm holding the brush now almost like a palette knife. Now you know you might have grayed out too much area. So, whoops, so um, that was me dropping a little bit of paint. When you pick bits of paint up like this, you've, you've really got to manage it, you've got to curl the brush. But I might just, I might just watch this. I'm actually using the brush like a, like a palette knife and just like smear it around. I mean, look at the result of that. You know, we've got this, this kind of brush stroke. Okay, I'm not fanning out of the corner. Don't go fan, 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 fan. Um, and immediately, if you start going the one direction too much, immediately switch direction. Okay, we're, we're sort of getting on to 10 minutes here, but um, I'm just gonna, hopefully I can feel, you can film some of this. Or you can watch this while I film it. So I know the camera's jiggling around and stuff, but you know, there we go. I'm, I don't normally film myself while I paint, so that's a bit tricky. I haven't got anyone else filming for me, but, don't, don't be afraid to kind of really lay that paint on thickly. 
beautiful. Okay, and you know, leave some of these dribbles. Don't obliterate them. They're magic. Don't obliterate them. Just leave them there. They're, they're so beautiful. I'm not going to introduce a color at this point. See, there's a little bit of anxiety here because I've got these beautiful dribbles and I really don't want to ruin them. So I might just work in between them. I don't know if you can, can I get the camera angle and, and paint at the same time? I'm just going to work in between those beautiful dribbles because I really don't want to damage them. I don't want to lose them. I'll get other dribbles later on. They may disappear, but I think I'm going to have a, I think I'm going to have an up and down vertical section in this painting here in my painting here. So we're mixing between working quite thick and in pasto and working with, with water, with our paint. All right, that'll do you. I reckon if you get, if you get your charcoal drawing done, add some water and then add some, look, look at the state of my palette. I'm, and I'm like, this is how I pick my paint up. I'm picking my paint up like, whoa, I'm curling it. As if I'm like picking up I don't know, spaghetti. <laughs> um, and, and I'm just gonna lay a bit more. Well, well, you gotta really catch it, right? So when you lay it down, it might, you might you might work for you to work flat. Who knows? You might work flat. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna show you the finished product on this. And uh, all right, we'll be done. Hang on a second, just give me a sec. And I'll, I'll, I'll pull back and show you the finished product. So I'm just gonna get a bit more in here. Um, you know, I mean, how much do you wanna watch me paint really? You don't really wanna watch me paint endlessly. Okay. Stage one, complete. Okay. So there's stage one done. There's lots of areas of exposed canvas. Okay. But there's also these areas where the paint is really quite thick. All right, so again, it's about density. Remember how we talked about you know, there's density in the tone, there's dark, dense bits here in, in the black, and then it becomes open space and then density, then open space. Now I've added another layer of density. We've gone density in the paint and then an open flat space and then back to thick, dense paint again. So if we get back, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. That's enough for me. That's a, that's a you know, that, there's, a, there's a good, um, well, I'm chopping in this video up in pieces, but I've been going for about almost 50 minutes now and, or an hour. Now I need to let it dry. So if it's sunny outside, what I'm going, what I would do, it's nighttime here, but what I would do is I, these thick lumps of paint really need to dry. So what I would do is I would put it out in the sun. If you don't have any sun, you know, because it's winter or whatever, you're painting at night, let it dry overnight. Or the other thing is to get a hair dryer into it and just start, start hair drying parts of it to get it dry. Because I really can't do stage two. I can't, really can't paint over this until this is all now dry. Um, but man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. This is this is my this is my drawing, remember, which came from the drawings of the sculptures, which is right there. Um, from that to that, it's already changed. It's already changed. Once you get to that, stop. Let it dry. So the last stage is I've got these outside drying in the sun. So here I am as a single canvas person. And here I am as a double canvas person, and I've just got them out drying in the sun. I've added all the, all the um, hopefully you can see that. I've added all the paint, all the white paint and everything to it. Um, so these were my, these were my double canvas drawings. Remember this? There's number one, which is, where's that one? Oh, that one's over there. So that one there is that one there because I've added paint. Remember I added paint and water to it like I, like I showed you. And then number two is that one there. They kind of get quite abstract and quite lost. And that's a nice thing. So, um, and uh, my charcoal, I think my charcoal ended up being a little one centimeter piece of charcoal in my hand. So anyway, put them out in the sun. Okay, we might not all have a grassy backyard, 
we might have a balcony, um, put a Peter newspaper underneath it and just let it dry in the sun and um, that'll be that'll be it, okay? So, uh, you know, good luck. Show us what you've got, post it up.